Good morning, everyone. How are you? Very well. So tell us about you and your sister, first of all. 2014, 2015-ish, when it all began for you? Yeah, well, I think that's the first time that we decided to call ourselves Drumroll, Hemsley and Hemsley, which are our surnames. <laughs> we spent two years trying to come up with a name. We settled on our surnames. We'd been cooking by that point for about two years for some lovely bands, like Take That and so on. We didn't really talk about it at the time because we, you know what it's like, we're famous people. You don't want to don't want name drop, no. but I will now. You can now. Only because Gary wrote about us in his last book, so that was really nice. And, um, now, and he really, his, his diet really sorted out his whole life. Yeah, and he says from tip to toe, from his mental health, his physical, his physical, and and all of that. And the 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 reason we were brought on is because they were reforming for the first time, and we had friends in common, and they wanted to feel really good going on tour. I'm going on a on a book tour at the moment, which is nothing like a take that stadium tour. And I'm I'm knackered, and I really know the importance of good food and sleep and getting outside and having a little run. Yes, yeah, really important. You've got to a three-month book. So this is the biggest signing tour I've ever seen. Is it? Yeah, three, three months is pretty serious. Oh, that's just part it? one, Chris. Oh my goodness! Well, good for you. <laughs> I'll be uh, I'll be culminating in a in a bit of Runfest as well in May. Love, you know, you come to Runfest, you come to LifeLessonsFestival.com, and all the better for it. Uh, what the one one of the things I love about your book, and there's lots to love, is that you've. I've never seen it in print. Guide to the Seasons. Uh, what to, what you That's should be fantastic. eating. Well, it's so simple. Why has nobody ever done this before? Print it out. Stick it. Have you have you got a, a desk with like a... I know this is your desk, but have you got a little bit of wall space you're allowed to, you know, yeah, well, tape mo- something onto, Probably Chris? better at home, but yes. Um, so early spring. Well, let's start with late winter, which is where we are now. Apples, beetroot, uh, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, carrots, celeriac, uh, celery, chicory, uh, citrus, oranges, etc. It goes on. And some of them overlap to early spring. You've still got your carrots, your beetroot, celeriac, leek. But That's then you move, move on to spinach spring onions and sweet mm. see spring onions uh, and, and spinach i thought i would think that now no not now not now good for you but not good maybe for about a million other reasons early summer asparagus broad beans carrots chilies courgettes cucumbers fennel how why did you start thinking like this sort of five almost ten years before lots of other people did well actually no lots of people have been cooking like this thinking like this being very in touch with nature and the seasons it's just that we've become increasingly disconnected from lots of things so the seasons same with me i had to really sit down I asked lots of farmers what they thought and they even the farmers argued amongst themselves because it depends last year was really wet at one point it was very hot at another point so seasons they do change but I wanted to be as informed as possible and one of the priorities I made for myself at the end of last year was well beginning of last year was really focusing on my mental health and also sustainability and the two go hand in hand because the closer I feel to nature the more I care about it and because well, you up, realize you're part of it you re- realize in part fact, of it. that's a very strange phrase uh, the closer I feel to nature even you're saying that. Yeah. We're not close to nature. We are nature. We are nature. Absolutely. The more I realise I'm part of nature. Sorry, yeah. you were saying no, anyway. There's that exactly. And you know, I grew, grew up in Kingston, Surbiton, suburbia. I never felt like it was countrysidey enough. And I never did, you know, I, I never saw veg growing. And now I'm in Leytonstone in East London and I'm really trying to grow things. And the, also when you see things grow, you don't want to waste. And food waste is such an issue. We're throwing away the equivalent of about £550 uh, of but each household a year at the moment, which is crazy. Well, they they did a thing last week, didn't they? They said you could fill Wembley seven times, Wembley Stadium, seven times with the amount of food waste we've just begun to save year on year because we are listening to to the right thing. That's save. That's that's from the from the waste food mountain, and wow. a, lot, a lot of this comes from your history, doesn't it, with your family? Yeah, mum's mum's Filipino Catholic, grew up with an army dad and army bases, and you know my mum and dad were always like, be ready for anything, you know, dun dun dun, and and one of that included being able to eat everything. <laughs> Do you want a real dun dun dun? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's that makes my heart race, and I can hear my mum <laughs> shouting at me over that sound. She would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you get you racing even more. <laughs> Imagine my dad tapped us. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop now. I've got very, You're sweaty. Getting, she's getting I've got really very hot. Sweaty, sweaty armpits now. I mean, it's scary enough doing this with you guys on Monday morning, let alone that. But um, no, mum, mum, you know, mum would very much be like. My mum grew up in very, uh, very modest upbringing in Manila. She didn't have very much food. She would really say, whatever you do, just don't waste yeah, your yeah. food. And she would, you know, we'd have one one roast chicken maybe every two weeks and it would stretch and stretch and last and last. And she hates me telling this, but on a Sunday, you know, sometimes we didn't have a roast and we would have big Sunday soup and it was everything from the fridge into the pot. So it could be leftover pasta, tomato sauce, veggies. And it was always delicious. She'd get old bread, she'd rehydrate it, she'd slather it in garlic butter. It was always yummy but when you're a kid you want fish fingers and exciting things yeah, yeah. but she's informed what i do and i've got a bit called mum's thrifty tips i know at the back it's like, like gold absolutely like mining for gold and it's there at the back of the book and um 
What, what I think is interesting is if you get some the freshest ingredients, seasonal ingredients is what we're talking about now as well, uh, more than ever before, or we should be anyway, if you put them on your chopping board, like, you know, some spring onions or a leek or whatever, I know this sounds mad, but make friends with them because it's their moment. This is, they've grown for this moment. This is what this is their purpose in life. What you're about to do with this is their purpose in life. And the more you make friends with whatever's on your chopping board, the more respect you'll have for it and the less you'll throw away. Because, you, in fact, you won't throw any away because it's like using a human being up and then just discarding them. Through into There's one that. Side. There you is know. that. Do you know one good tip for that is keep a, keep a glass bowl or some sort of bowl in front of you. Before you put things in the bin, yeah. put it into the bowl. And then before you put that bowl into the bin, just have a little look. There's yeah. almost certainly something you could be doing with mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and you save money and a lot of it is flavour you know do you know the parmesan rind trick or the cheese rind trick I chuck that into pasta sauces bolognese and it gives that lovely salty flavours free flavour well when, you, when you're trying to sort out your clutter in your life um, you know, and in your mind there's that thing called Ohio only handle it once um, because if you start to handle it more than once you, you're just dithering this is the opposite it's, it's oh hit only handle it twice uh, so, you, so you take the ingredients you say and you give them a chance in the holding area before they go into the bin is what you're saying, isn't yeah. it? So maybe put the glass bowl near where the bin is and just be, so to remind you not to put all the stuff in the bin. And the other thing I've realised about what you're saying here, and I've never realised this before, is that because our, our twins are 16 months old, right, they eat strawberries because they love strawberries. So I, they ate strawberries over the weekend. Now, they're not seasonal. And they're not as tasty. They're not from Britain. They've got loads of carbon footprint and all that kind of stuff. But here's, here's the real crime. And it's our crime as well. We've got to sort this out, uh, me, me and Tash. Um, our babies are going to think that strawberries grow in the winter because that's the message they're getting. They're not going to realise they're seasonal. So we, know that we, so we know that we used to eat seasonally. We now know that we're not eating seasonally because we're aware of what seasonal is. Our babies aren't going to think anything was ever seasonal. That's that's the real crime, isn't mm. it? It's a brainwashing kind of thing. I one of the things I most regret about my childhood, um, not that I look back on it like that with massive regrets, but I didn't learn to cook. Sooner. Oh, you le let's say le one of the things you have learned yeah. from looking back at yourself. Yeah, childhood. is I wish I'd learned to cook cook um, earlier and I learned to cook really when I left home. I guess my mum spoiled me in a way, but she only spoiled me because she worked six days a week and she. <clears throat> She just wanted to get the food on the table, so she didn't have time to, you know, bake cupcakes with me yeah, in the kitchen. And but I wish I'd learned to cook, and I wish my school had shown me. And and I try and work with a lot of people, like the Felix Project, who are food waste charity, and they redistribute food, they rescue it, and they take it to people that need it. And we do summer schools because a lot of the time, the uh, the hot meal at lunch is for some kids in London, all over the country, is where they get their hot meal. Yeah. So we rescue food, we show them what to do with it, and we show them what leftovers are and we give them containers and we say take this home you can reheat it and mm. we taught them through reheating and they're like oh okay crazy and I, I love this because your book your book is a cookbook it's got a hundred um, uh, uh, delicious flexitarian recipes in it but also it's a story there's a story here as well because you can cook you can cook with care you can cook quickly but you can cook quickly with care and there's a whole section on that too so we're talking to Melissa Hemsley about Eat Green uh, which is out now it was out on the 9th of Jan and she's, she's touring uh, most of the galaxy <laughs> signing books um, over the next uh, 300 light years is that about right? That's it including Runfest Run and LifeLessonsFestival.com uh, week this weekend The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky